Well, I'm glad that you've all decided you'd like to work on learning some giraffe. There's nothing I like better than to share this process of giraffe or nonviolent communication or compassionate communication. These are all words that I use to describe the process, but whatever we call it, I'm always glad to help people practice integrating it into their lives. So I'm hoping you have some concrete situations I could show you how it works in or questions. Anybody have any ideas as to how we can get started? Yes, like uh, I heard you say in your lecture, uh, you have a difficult time, or the most difficult time with your family and your lover. And that's how I find my life also. It's somehow much easier to open my universal heart to people outside of me than it is to open my heart of hearts to my family. Well, I'm glad you want to work at that level, because I'm sure we can all get a better idea of how giraffe works in that. Let me be your lover, for example. And what kind of jackless thing might I say that makes you forget all about these good ideas of compassion? You're too sensitive. Ah, so I give you a diagnosis. Yes. You're too sensitive. Well, the very fact that you find that a difficult message tells me what ears you wear, you see. That tells me that you probably are wearing these jackal ears turned inward. Definitely. And if you do that, then you start to take it personally. You start to think there is such a thing as being too sensitive and that that's wrong to be that way. There's something wrong with you. Mm -hmm. And then you start to feel like PPPPPT. Pretty poor protoplasm, <laughs> poorly put together. <laughs> That's it. Yes, of course. Uh, it's very easy when confronted with a diagnosis yielding jackal to, with these ears to take this in and uh -huh. think that there's something wrong with us or to put these ears on facing out and diagnose the jackal for diagnosing you. Sure. So that would work this way. You're too sensitive. Well, you're judgmental. Uh -huh. You see and, uh, or you can be earbidextrous. You can uh, hear, a, hear a little bit of both, you see. You can both take it personally mm -hmm. and you can judge at the same time. Mm -hmm. But, of course, we all know the pain that both of those leads to. Right. See, what I've learned, and the more I learn to practice putting on these ears, which I'll give you a chance to do now, is that when I have those ears on, I see that the messages that are the hardest for me to hear are the ones that the other person's in the most pain and the most need me to hear their pain mm -hmm. and not get caught up in the judgments. So now with those ears on, when the other person said, you're too sensitive, you will not hear anything being said about yourself. Mm -hmm. You will only hear that that person has some feelings and needs, and that says nothing about you. So let's try that out. I'm going to say the message as this other person, and now the first words out of your mouth are going to be, are you feeling? And you're going to try to connect with the feelings. And then you're going to say, because you are needing. And you're going to try to connect with the person's needs. And if you're not able to do that yet, because you're just learning how to use the ears, we'll have this trained giraffe coach you. All right. <laughs> All right. You're too sensitive. Uh, how are you feeling? Oh, excuse oh, me. Excuse me. Asking a person how they're feeling often makes us look like a jackal. We look like we are a psychoanalytic jackal. Correct. Psychoanalyzing them, you see. Now, we don't ask how a person feels with those ears on. We sense how they feel and check it out with them. Are you feeling? And guess what that person's feeling. Try that. You're too sensitive. Are you feeling sensitive? <laughs> <laughs> okay. And, and be... Let's see if we can get another word for what kind of sensitivity, like what kind of emotion might this person have? My lover usually hurt. Ah, so sense that. Say, are you feeling hurt? Are you feeling hurt? Now say, because, and hear why the person's feeling hurt. Are you feeling hurt because of what I said to you? Oh, hold on. Here's what you're doing. Right into the jackal's jaws. Because mm -hmm. see, what you said is, are you feeling hurt because of what I've said? Sure. Uh -huh. And as soon as you do that, you are taking responsibility for the jackal's feelings. 
which is not good for the jackal because when we feel responsible for the other person's feelings, we cannot respond from compassion. Then we feel guilty. We feel we've done something to hurt them. Mm -hmm. So no, it's not, are you feel hurt because of something I said? Are you feeling hurt because you would have liked different understanding than you received? Or are you feeling hurt because you would have liked to have heard what I said expressed differently? So we want to hear the feelings and the needs of the other person without hearing that we are the cause of that. Our behavior is never the cause of other people's feelings when we have a giraffe consciousness. It may be a stimulus, but never the cause. As long as we feel the cause of another person's pain, we can't really give them the empathy that they need to heal from the pain. So let's try it again with, are you feeling hurt because you would have liked or because you are needing? Let's put that focus. You're too sensitive. Are you feeling hurt? And are you feeling hurt because... Um, you uh, are needing. I, I, yeah, because you are needing. What? <laughs> what is this poor jackal needing? And uh, what are you needing? <laughs> and I'll see here again, we don't ask how the person is feeling, nor do we ask what are you needing. We sense it and guess. Check it out. Watch the giraffe. Okay. Are you feeling hurt because you'd like to be understood without what you're saying being taken personally? Yes, you always take everything personally. Uh -huh. I mean, I can't say a thing without you getting, you know, upset. And I'm sick of it. I mean, you're just oversensitive. <laughs> Deep breath, you see. Now, uh -huh. this giraffe is glad that it's practiced focusing because it's spent a lot of time learning how to get in touch with its feelings and needs. And it uh -huh. can give itself some emergency first aid empathy right now <laughs> to, to deal with what's going on so it can then focus its attention on the other person again. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like it's enormously frustrating for you. You'd like to be able to say some things and just have them understood without then having to see me in pain because I was not able to hear it. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. So how does this process feel to you when you think of putting the ears on like that? It feels much better than the jackal ear. <laughs> much better. P part of what does go on is, I'm, a vo I guess it's a jackal voice. Uh, wonders if I'll be right. When you what, when you what, guess the other person's yes. feeling, I'm glad right, you're but, conscious of that because giraffes never try to be right or perfect. Giraffes only want to become progressively less stupid. <laughs> <laughs> you see. <laughs> If you want to be right, then we get so afraid that we're afraid to guess what the other person feels. And then we ask, how are you feeling? Because we don't want to be vulnerable and show what we're guessing. Uh -huh. But if your want is to become progressively less stupid, then if I haven't been right, being wrong gives me a chance to learn. Sure. You see. No, giraffes know that anything that's worth doing is worth doing poorly. Uh -huh. You see. <laughs> So I'm glad that you were conscious that that made this hard for you to do because gi giraffe ears, you see, the technology doesn't mean we can always guess right what the other person is feeling and needing. All the giraffe ears do is focus our attention in that direction. Mm -hmm. And then we give it our most sensitive guess, intuitive guess, and check it out. Are you feeling hurt? No, I'm not feeling hurt, stupid. I'm scared. Oh, okay, so it's one nice thing about jackals. If we don't hear them accurately the first time, they'll keep repeating themselves until we do. Uh -huh. That's one of the two things I love about jackals. They always give you another chance. If you haven't heard them, they'll usually keep repeating themselves ad nauseum until you do hear them. The other thing I like about jackals that we just saw, they're very liberal and generous with their diagnoses. See, notice mm -hmm. how this jackal diagnoses you. You're too sensitive. Now you know what's wrong with you. You don't have to worry about it anymore. You can sleep nights. And they don't even charge you for this diagnosis. It's wonderful. It's wonderful if you have those ears on. Right. Yeah. <laughs>